Welcome back to another video. Thank you for joining me. A project I talked about on my last video that was close to launching actually has launched. I'm going to fill you in on that. And then I want to lead with this great clip here. U.S. major banks on Ripple plus Ripple selected bank partners. Give them 90% network coverage of the world. Take a listen. It's very short. U.S. major banks on, um, on Ripple, question here. We're working very closely with Bank of America Merrill Lynch. Um, they are one of the seven core banks which are helping us create our governance um, structure. So to complete this is Bank of America Merrill Lynch, um, CIBC Canada, Royal Bank of Canada, Bank of Tokyo Mitsubishi, which is the, uh, the fourth largest bank um, in the world, Santander Group, uh, number 19 worldwide, and um, Standard Charter Group, and Westpac Australia. And we chose those banks to give us a a good global spread um, around the world. So we have very good input from um, different markets and, uh, and different thinking. We chose those banks because they provide a good global spread. The goal for Ripple as a company is for every bank to utilize the value proposition that XRP provides. It saves them time. It saves them money. Some of the banks mentioned in this clip, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Royal Bank of Canada. We're not talking about any small banks. Moving forward, Binance, the largest crypto exchange in the industry by far. No exchange comes anywhere close to Binance. Shutting down operations in Canada. In another similar headline, rumors of Binance considering leaving the U.S. due to regulatory reasons. Probably a good time if you guys know Binance is a crypto exchange. If you need a spot to get XRP or Flare, I recommend Uphold. It's sleek, it's simple, it's secure, and it's where I dollar cost average and buy my XRP and Flare daily. A link to Uphold in the video description below. And some technical analysis. I follow this guy on Twitter, Rhythmic Analyst. You can pay for his Discord. I don't pay anything. He just tweets out stuff like this for free, and he's actually very intelligent over the past three years of watching his calls. The guy's right a lot. He says, the current Bitcoin price phase reminds me of August 2020. And that's obviously pretty exciting stuff if you look over on the chart. You can see August 2020 is before Bitcoin went absolutely parabolic. And he says Bitcoin has formed fractals. If fractals continue, then it should offer us a good bounce from here. So lots of lines, circles, different colors. I'm not going to act like I'm some chart master because at the end of the day, charts can say one thing and do the complete opposite and very rare are people winning traders. Trading is looking at a screen all day, and when you win, you're just taking money from someone else. It's a zero-sum game, but yes, there are successful traders. And this guy, Rhythmic Analyst, is one of them I recommend following him. Breaking news, ahead of the May 10th hearing of the U.S. House Committee on Financial Services, Democrats were handed a memo instructing them to back the party line on crypto regulation and to support the SEC. Just another example that the world is truly a stage. I talked about this yesterday, Pulse Chain, guys. It has already launched. Follow the founder. There's tons of people trying to scam people with this new project that just came out. Every big influencer is going to be talking about this soon. And if they're not, you probably shouldn't watch their content because I'm telling you, it's going to be one of the best projects of this next cycle. We can come back and look at it. It's basically Ethereum, but more throughput. And if you look at other projects, they've done pretty well that help Ethereum with its congestion. So shortly after making my video last night, um, and it's my birthday weekend, so happy 30th birthday to me. I was telling my mom the best gift I could have this year for my birthday is if Pulse Chain launches. I got into the initial investment two years ago, and man, it's funny how the world works. My big 30th and Pulse Chain launches almost on the exact day. So if you're interested, I'm not here to tell you to buy it, but if I plant the seed and one person does their own research and learns about this project, it's going to be absolutely crazy. This is not an ad. This is not a sponsor. Uh, obviously, I'm pretty big into this project, but I don't just talk about XRP here. I talk about real valuable projects and XRP is a valuable token, but there's other gains happening every day in crypto and Pulse Chain is going to be one of them, I think. Speaking of gains, if you guys want $41 for free, listen up. Sign up with Webull, deposit one penny. You can get up to 3000 in free stocks. Typically, you're just going to get 40 or 300 bucks. But it's a great offer just for signing up, depositing a penny. You're guaranteed $41 in minimum stocks. Sell your stocks, close your account, do whatever you want, but don't miss out on this offer. It does end soon. Link in the video description below. 
And with YouTube, there is some censorship problems. I have a backup channel on Rumble, totally uncensored, cool platform. Thanks to everyone that likes my content. Check me out on Rumble in the video description below if you do like uncensored content. So breaking the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. And if you guys do use Twitter and you come across a good story, you want to be featured in my videos, just tweet the story at me. I also have my Twitter in the description below. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce has just filed a brief in the Coinbase versus SEC case, calling out the SEC for acting unlawfully in the digital asset space. This is the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, not the Chamber of Digital Commerce. This is a big deal. Here's why. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce is a highly influential organization representing companies in all industries, not just crypto. The brief opens with, as it stands today, nobody knows for certain which digital assets, if any, are securities under federal law. Exactly. The chamber makes three arguments. Regulatory is uncertainty, is killing innovation in the U.S., the SEC is destabilizing the digital asset regulatory environment. The SEC is violating constitutional due process and fair notice rights. And the topper is the chamber declares the SEC's actions are not just harmful policy. They are unlawful. Not just harmful policy. The SEC's actions are unlawful. And people still think Ripple's going to lose this lawsuit. Comment below, guys. Give me your honest opinion. And I want some naysayers. Do you think Ripple loses this lawsuit? Yes or no? Tell me why in the comments below. Bottom line, the court will give these arguments advanced by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce serious attention. And the largest, most influential business organization in the U.S. has just declared it stands with crypto. Let me say that one more time. The largest, most influential business organization in the U.S. has just declared at a stance with crypto. Florida Governor DeSantis officially bans CBDCs in Florida. The new law prohibits the use of a United States federal CBDC as money within Florida's universal uniform commercial code. It also bans the use of CBDCs issued by foreign governments and calls on other states to use their commercial codes to institute similar prohibitions. Personally, I don't see a problem with traditional physical money. I know we're moving towards a digitized world, but think about it, guys. This gives potential for your money to be more controlled. Do you want to be controlled? Some people do. Look at the COVID-19 thing. And follow me on Rumble, because I really speak my mind sometimes and I can't overhear. Link to Rumble in the video description below. But with the COVID-19 thing, people were begging the government to take away their freedoms begging government please take please don't allow me the right for freedom of movement you know the only difference between being imprisoned and being a free person the freedom of movement and people were begging for that to be taken away so uh let me know your thoughts in the comments below about cbdc's i do think they're inevitable but personally i don't think there's a problem with just the paper money okay moving forward Ethereum isn't the internet of value. Ripple and XRP is intricately part of the internet of value. Listen very carefully. That's really what Ethereum is. You know, people talk, people talk about things, uh, talk about cryptocurrency 2.0 being like the internet of value. We're not, we're not the internet of value. Ripple is the internet of value. We're an arbitrary process of state transaction functions. This is the founder of Ethereum, one of the smartest minds in crypto. XRP, Ripple is the internet of value. And this guy speculates, as stated by XRP, it will be a storage of value for the new financial system. Keep in mind, X.com is owned. This domain is owned by Elon Musk. And X.com is Elon's goal for an everything app. An app where you have social media and you also have payments. Something like WeChat, they call it in China. What a perfect currency for payments. Not only is it scalable, fast, cheap. But X.com goes perfectly with XRP. I'm kind of speculating here, but it's exciting to think about. If you guys made it to the end of the video, comment Ripple XRP in the comment section below. Thank you for giving me nine minutes of your day. When you watch the full video, it really support. So let me know you're a loyal supporter by commenting Ripple XRP in the comment section below. And make sure you smash that like button if you enjoyed. Until next time, my friends.